Day trading on range charts for patterns. Is it any good? Is it worth it? Is it something that we should possibly take a look at? Arguably, pattern trading is one of the most adopted things in trading as a whole. Whether you're trading a head and shoulders pattern, a, a square, a circle, it doesn't matter what you're trading. A pattern is a pattern is a pattern. It's a repetitious situation that occurs that we can count on. And, well, range bars are based on distances, so do they fit? Does that work well for pattern traders? Hey there, John Henry here, SSFTG Slingshot Futures Trading Group. Welcome to the video. Uh, I hope you have had a fantastic day so far looking at the charts and, and everything else that's going on. Now, what we're going to be talking about today is pattern trading and more specifically range charts. Uh, day trading with range charts, are, are they any good, right? Are they worth trading with? What are they good at? What are they bad at, etc.? Now, obviously, if we look at the chart here, we can see that this is not a normal chart. Every candle is arguably the exact same size, and if we measure them, we will find that from the bottom to the top is 15 ticks there, and if I go from the bottom to the top here, that's 15 ticks, and if I go from the bottom or the top to the bottom, that is also 15 ticks. That is because we are on a 15 range chart. You can see that up in the top left. Now, what does that mean? Well, obviously, if it's not already the kind of pointed out there, every candle will never be larger than 15 ticks. But there's a caveat to that. We've got to take a step backward a second here and look at how these candles actually work. The candle itself will never be larger than 15 ticks because it's a 15 range chart. But how does it create the next candle then, right? It's got to go that 16th tick. That 16th tick is the first tick of the next candle, right? So you'll notice that sometimes there will be gaps, there'll be spaces, there'll be distances, and that's because it was reaching out to get its last tick to complete the last candle. Every single candle is going to have that. That's just how they operate. They do have gapless range bars, but to me, this just kind of makes more sense. Either way, uh, we have a scenario that is effectively every single candle being 15 ticks. So what is this good for? One thing that stands out very obviously when we're looking at a chart that is purely oriented on distance, this has no orientation on time whatsoever. It is all distance. Uh, so because of that, this fits beautifully for patterns because patterns are nothing more than distances that we've measured and kind of justified to be a pattern. It's really all they are anyway. And this operates in the same context. A 15 range chart is going to be a little bit more straightforward in terms of patterning. Now, when we zoom way, way out, you will notice something that does occur on these range charts, and that's this choppy, sloppy, back and forth mess. That is going to happen on every time frame, obviously. But depending on the size of the range, this may be something that you can kind of tune out a little bit. That's a 123 tick range, so you would need like a 100, 100 tick range bar. Uh, but as far as the oops, 100 range bar, I mean. Uh, but then you're going to have an incredibly low amount of candles. We barely have anything. There's, you know, maybe 20 candles in a day. So from a pattern perspective then, what do I use range bars for? Do I use them? Are they useful or, or how do we approach? Range bars to me are something that operate very, very functionally within a pattern mindset, but very much so in a specific straight to the point pattern, meaning A to B to C to D. There's no in between like there is with time charts, like this kind of stuff here is straight up disqualification. But if we're looking for movement that would be, let's say Elliott wave reminiscent, Wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five, right? That's what I mean by just straight to the point. That's where you're going to find range charts fit the best. When we're looking at patterns, and it doesn't matter what the pattern is. That's the cool thing about the markets, but whatever pattern you're looking at, whether you're looking at a, a bounce two, like we use in the, with the VIPs in the room, or if you're looking at a Fibonacci pullback, whatever, as long as you have the proper pattern, you know that you're good to go. Now, outside of the pattern and the distances and all that kind of stuff, one other really cool thing is that if the market's not moving, neither is the chart, right? If, if the market's not moving because nothing's happening, then you're just not going to have very many candles. So the time scale at the bottom can be crazy sometimes, or if there's a huge amount of volatility, you'll see a very big chunk of candles over a very small span of time. As an example, this is only 10 minutes. <laughs> Right? So that's something to kind of consider when we're looking at the overall range charts. They operate differently. 
taking a look at another example of what I'm talking about, here is a beautiful bounce four. We have a deep, deep pullback that comes back to an L4. And because this is a range chart, remember, straight in, straight out, we want it to be very straight to the point, right? So this goes up. The next pullback that takes place that plots a bear bar, that better be an L1 based on the pattern because that's what we're looking for, and that's exactly what it was, and continued back up. And that's really where range bars kind of, that's where they find their niche, right, is with patterns. They're based on distances. Patterns are typically based on distance and time. So when we're utilizing range bars by themselves, we are taking away the time element. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it depends. For me, like I said, I'm very particular with the range candles. They've got to set up exactly the way that I want them to set up, and if they don't, I'm not interested. That's because I am very to the point when you're talking about range charts being patterns. Range charts being patterns should be perfect. Otherwise, I don't want it. Uh, now, that's how I use range charts. Is that the only way? Of course not. I do think range charts have a fit in pretty much every trading style that uses patterns. That's where they shine. But is it one that should dominate your screen and take over the whole thing? Not necessarily, but it can. Right? If you're zooming out a little bit further to a wider, like this is a 50 range chart, you're not going to get a candle every couple seconds. I mean, it's going to be pretty quick. So the overall follow through should be straight to the point. And that's really where I think personally range charts really, really shine. Now, something that we can kind of go back on a little bit is going back to the 15 range chart and looking at these zones of consolidation. I know we kind of glazed over it a little bit talking about wanting perfect patterns, but the one beautiful thing that range bars do incredibly well is show you where consolidation took place. It is super obvious when the market has the gas pedal down and when it doesn't have the gas pedal down, right? That's the awesome thing about range charts is they make it so that when it is in a range, it's pretty obvious to see it's in a range. It's just up, down, up, down, up, down. It looks like, a, you know, a red light, green light game. So one real big perk to utilizing range charts, especially if you're an accumulation trader or a build-in trader for patterns, is waiting for the market to demonstrate consolidation. And you can see that very, very obviously when you're looking at a range chart, much more obviously than you can on a time-based or tick-based form. So along with patterns, although we don't have time as a basis, we can still use overall movement and distances to dictate where consolidation takes place versus breakout movement. And that's a really big perk to range bars as well. So that's going to do it for this one. I hope you found it useful, interesting, entertaining. I've been getting a couple questions on range charts. They're gaining a little bit of popularity again. I don't know why, but I wanted to make sure to cover them so that we are on the same page. Range charts, I think, have a definitive place in the trading repertoire, but there are definitely some caveats that go along with it. If you have any other ideas that maybe I missed on range charts or something of a, you know, an input on range charts, feel free, drop them in the comments below. Let me know what you're thinking and, uh, and we can go from there. Along with that, if you have any questions questions on, uh, on what's going on with this video or anything else, you can drop them in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning how to day trade for a living so you can ditch the dreaded J-O-B, and that will allow you to, uh, to hang out and with us and the rest of the VIPs in the live morning room where we day trade all day, right? Uh, we have a one-week free trial that you can register for right on the main page of SSFTG. And when you register for that free trial, you also get the 24-page guide of risk-reward totally free added on top of that. Plus, you have time to schedule a call with me to take care of any questions that you have along the way. Speaking of, if you do have any questions and you haven't signed up for a call or anything like that, we do also go live on YouTube every day or at least every trading day, uh, most trading days at least at 1300 Eastern. So stop in with me and the rest of the afternoon crew and hang out. Uh, we hunt for some scalping opportunities in the afternoon to see if anything wants to set up. We review some of the trades from earlier in the session, cover some Q&A and a ton more stuff. So I hope to see you there. Have an awesome rest of your day. I hope it was a fantastic one and we will see you in the next. Thanks.